Let's share today very briefly by the grace of God. We're going to look at the resurrection as the guarantee for transformation. We are still talking resurrection. Resurrection guarantees transformation. Let's do some teaching. The next service, I'm going to talk about the resurrection guaranteeing resurrection guaranteeing victory. So today we are looking at transformation and victory from the place, the power, the, re the power of the resurrection. So the resurrection is not just what we celebrate on a Sunday or what we talk about as Christians. The resurrection is the fabric of the life of the believers, the fabric of life, the energy of life, the essence of life for believers. So the distinguishing factor between a believer and non-believer is the resurrection. So if you live in the same space with people and others are non-believers and you are the believer, you are the resurrection coverage of that place. You are the God factor in that place. You are the carrier of eternity in that place. You carry the greatest energy. You are produced from the the greatest concentration of energy. The greatest concentration of energy is not nuclear power. Nuclear bomb is a risen soul. The soul made fabricated in the place of the resurrection. And that gives you the greatest advantage. There is no way on earth I can settle for failure. The Americans say something that I don't know whether I, I what they make out of that but there is a spirit behind that it's a get rich or die trying to <laughs> there's something there is a sense in it there's a sense in it get rich it's just that it's just rich as in issue of a little money here and some big money there or die getting getting trying to die trying to means you you can rob kill and be killed and all of that that is not the value that I represent. But what I take away from that saying is the doggedness, the attitude of tenacity. That means keep trying it. Tra keep trying it. Keep trying. As a believer, your dying get dying trying to is not the dying of hanging yourself or killing people or robbing people or doing things that are unethical that are unrighteous but it speaks to the issue of tenacity of focus of stability in the pursuit of getting it right of getting it home of bringing it home okay so it's just to let you know that the resurrection is not just a doctrine the resurrection is the fabric of life say the resurrection is the fabric of the believer's life. So the resurrection is the energy of the believer's spirit. So the highest level of the highest concentration of energy is in the spirit of the believer. Wow, that's what I believe in. That means I I can't imagine me quitting. I can't imagine me quitting in the game of life. I can't imagine me giving up. I can't imagine me not succeeding in what God has put in my hand. Depend, no matter what is what the what success will be as definition in that context, I have to figure it out because I carry solution. I, carry, I am born of God's solution. So we are going to talk about the resurrection guaranteeing transformation. So the resurrection guarantees transformation. Say it will be the resurrection guarantees transformation. Now let's look briefly to uh, you know look at the meaning of transformation. The meaning of transformation. Very briefly, let's look at the meaning of transformation. First Corinth chapter 3 and verse 18 first corinth chapter 3 and verse 18 sorry it should be second corinth not first corinth second corinth chapter 3 
and verse 18. Sorry about that. Second Corinth. So, but we all with un unveiled faces, we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, being transformed, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. When we're talking about the glory of the Lord, it was at the transfiguration that the glory of the Lord was seen for the first time by the apostles. They saw the glory of the Lord and they recommended, let us not leave this place. Let's stay here. And this is alluding to that, that experience. Beholding as with unveiled face, Unveiled means not covered. And this is contrasting the experience of the people of Israel. In the time of Moses, each time he will come down from the mountain, having been with the Lord, his face will be, trans his face will be transformed and luminous, lighted and lighting and bright, brilliant. And the people of Israel will say, no, 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 we cannot stand this. Cover your face. So they could not, they needed a covering. They could not peek. They could not peek into the glory of God. They could not see into the glory of God. They needed a veil. So this is the contrast. And say, unlike the people of Israel who will need a covering, a covering so as to avoid the glory of God, we with unveiled say unveiled. It means every covering removed, every obstacle removed, every hindrance removed. We behold, the word behold is not a glance, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Beholding is a stable look, intentional look into, and are being transformed. So the word transform is metamorpho, metamorpho. It is from this where we have metamorphosis. For those in, in who have studied basic science, biology and Related science is talking about metamorphosis in agriculture and in life generally. So when we talk about metamorphosis, we are dealing with metaphu. Metaphu is a verb form. And it's a combination of meta, which is after, beyond, after. And then morphe, which is form. Morphe is form or nature. It's form, shape. On nature. So when the scripture is talking about metamorpho means the change of nature, the change of form, the change of shape, the change of shape. This is what the scripture is talking about. And what 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 is it that brings about this change of shape? Is beholding the glory. Say the glory. Come on, say the glory. The glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord is basically stable eternal in the reality of the resurrection the glory of the lord so connection with the glory of the risen lord is the reason of the change of form the change of shape and the change of nature let me look at you and talk about you at least briefly every one of you see that here your life has a particular shape particular nature particular form when i talk about form the change of form that the resurrection brings about that the glory of the lord brings about is not a change or a change of form that is physical like you lost 100 pounds or 100 kilograms in one night because you beheld the lord if that's what god wants to do that can be called some level some strange miracles but that is not what the resurrection brings about that's not what the glory of the lord brings about that's not what beholding the glory of the lord brings about it's not the physical shape as in your your height or as in your size your mass in the flesh the scripture says that the, the flesh has nothing to offer so it's not about the the issue of the flesh how how large or lean or tall or short you are in the flesh the nature we are talking about is spiritual nature the nature that makes you tall, but a tall fool. The nature that makes you beautiful, but a beautiful witch. 
The nature that makes you skinny and short, but excellent and extraordinary. So the shape we are talking about is the unseen shape that is seen in your action. The unseen shape that is seen in your relationship. The unseen shape that is heard when you speak, in conversation, in doing business with people. The unseen shape that comes alive in your interaction with people. That somebody welcomes you into his or her space and suddenly energy is dark. That is the shape we are talking about. That getting into a relationship with somebody becomes the reason somebody sings like a boat. That somebody's life is broken apart. Somebody implodes. Somebody's spiritual life disappears instantly. Just because you showed up. The form of destruction, the form of evil, the form which is sinful, the form that is corruption. That is what we are talking about. The form that is also either glory, the form that is holy, the form that is righteous, the form that makes you the desire of people. I want that person. I will want somebody like that in my team. I will want somebody like that in my space. I will want somebody like that in my company. I will want somebody like that in, in marriage. I want somebody like that in relationship. I just want somebody like that, even as a friend, somebody I can talk to, somebody that can counsel me. It is not as a result of your height or anything physical in shape is as a result of your your immortal shape your your intangible shape your spiritual shape so when the scripture is talking about metamorpho here is a change from one nature to another nature is a change from one spiritual shape to another is a change from one form to another form transformation the word reformation i don't know whether you have heard reformation reformation is not the same thing as transformation when we talk about reforming reforming criminals we take criminals to the prison and they are reformed and all of that a reforming some modification you know in a modification of some external thing you know could you be no by you know putting somebody through the process that somebody can see somebody's money and walk away or somebody can see a fight and people and this is what he will have loved to do but he walks away but that does not change the nature of that person it's just that he puts some level of change some level of control some leash it just brings some restraint that can make the person appear a little bit more accommodating and accommodatable. Somebody that you can at least can now stay in your house, can now live with you and all of that. But it is not a change of form in a sense that when there is, the triggers are strong, somebody goes back. That is how you see people who have been in prison because they killed people or they robbed. They say, oh, it's been reformed, it's been given parole, it's, uh, it's allowed to go because he had behaved well. After some time, some pressure came, some triggers came, and somebody goes back doing the same thing and doing even worse things. That is not transformation, it is reformation. And what the resurrection of Jesus Christ offers the soul is not reformation, it is transformation. Trans. The word trans it has to do with movement. In a place like Portugal, you hear of trans Amadi. Trans has to do with a movement, a journey, a departure from one place. It is from that you have you have you have transportation. Translocation. The moving of one location from one to another transportation one port from one port to another port so the word trans implies a, a movement so that is where change comes in that you are moving from one form to another form shout form i didn't hear you shout loud form and then shout another form that is it. so two forms so everybody sitting down here there is a particular form a part form here as in nature from here as who you are substantially internally that outside of you the makeup and the beautiful dresses just become lies just become lies pack 
packaging you to look like something you are not. And when pressure, and by the way, please don't take anybody seriously until that person has been tested under pressure. Don't marry any woman on earth. Don't marry any man on earth that you have not tested under pressure. You have not yet known somebody until you meet somebody's life under intense pressure. Intense pressure brings out the nature that is stable and specific to that person. Whatever is the pressure, whatever is the pressure, financial pressure, spiritual pressure, physical pressure, social pressure, whatever is the pressure that will act upon somebody. So watch somebody under pressure, pressure of work. As somebody who employs people to work for you, you don't promote somebody until you can find out what the person does under pressure. Because under pressure, all the facades will fall apart. All the cosmetics and the makeup will fall apart. All the attitude thing, all the, all the psychological and self-help books will fall apart under pressure. At that point, it is nature. It is form. It is shape. And in marriage, can I tell you something? You will not marry makeup. You will marry shape. You will marry form. You will marry nature. That is why, sorry, I'm talking to mostly young people who are either married or planning to get married. <laughs> Don't marry somebody in hope that it will change. Hope is not a strategy. And hope does not change people. Only God does. And God will not change people <clears throat> except people are ready to be changed. By the grace of God, for a few months and a few years, I've been overseeing the transformation ministry of seeing people move from one place of life to another. I've seen people who move and move on forever and become great change. I've seen people who move and have wonderful testimonies that will not last for three weeks, not three months, not six months. They go back to the other form because they prefer. And what you prefer, God respects. Write it down. What you prefer, God respects. If you prefer death, God respects you dying. It's your wish. If you prefer change and glorious change, God will honor it. God will respect it. And it will come to pass. If that is what you want. If that, because what you prefer is what you want. Preference means you let go somebody, something else. You sacrifice something else. That's what preference does. I let go the other one because I prefer. I prefer this to this. That means I let go this. The day you prefer, God will respect. The day you prefer, God will respect. Esau preferred eating immediately and letting go his birthright. God respected. His brother ruled over him. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. The young lady called Opa preferred to go back to Moab instead of going with Naomi into the future of the Messiah. God respected. God is a God of choice. Your greatest power is in your choice. You're choosing. Your greatest power is in your choice. You're choosing. Your future looks like your choice now. Don't let anybody lie to you. Your choice, your ability to choose is greater than all the witches and wizards, their power combined. Because you can choose to make them irrelevant. You can choose to make their power useless concerning you. Or you can choose to allow all their wishes to come to pass in your life. So your preference. So we are still trying to look at what transformation means. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Are being moved from one form, one nature, one shape 
A shape that gives shape to our life. Can I tell you something? Your inner shape gives, gives form to your outside shape. So when you walk into somebody's life and you see confusion anywhere, that's the nature of confusion. If you want to use the word spirit, you can say the spirit of confusion. Again, Maroni is spirit confusion. Oh, that young man seemed to be, he seemed to walk under the influence of the spirit of confusion. Now, people, when they ask confu when they ask you a question, you are confused. Because you don't know what, what this question is all about. They will just take you completely outside the track, and it's like you don't even you, you doubt yourself whether you were whether you don't even know what you are doing. The confusion. By the time they make their contribution, not question after question, by the time they make their own contribution, yeah, you can you can swear you don't know where you are going to or where you are coming from. They have the form of confusion. A form of confusion. I'm praying in the name of Jesus. That as you hear, something is happening to your form. I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ. That as you hear, something is changing in your shape. I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ. That as you hear this word, something is turning around in your nature. In the, in the name of Jesus Glory to God, be seated, be seated. Transformed into the same image. Now, see, transformed from what the person used to be. If we go back to that scripture, you can see the trans, the, the move of form, the movement of form, the motion of form, the journey of form from the original to something else. But we all with unveiled face, because we behold with un unveiled face with naked face with bare face as in a mirror the glory of the Lord pay attention to the glory we are still talking about the form and then we shall go to the glory because the glory is the resurrection and being transformed let me have that in NIV NIV makes it a little bit easy and relatable and then I be say, as we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory and being transformed into his likeness, into the likeness of the glory, the likeness of the glory that we behold, the likeness of the Lord's glory that we see with we reflect and, and behold with unveiled faces. We are transformed into transformed from into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit so we are dealing with spiritual transformation is this spiritual transformation that makes somebody fit for spiritual things for spiritual purpose of marriage for spiritual purpose of life for spiritual purpose of business for spiritual purpose of parenting, the transformation. When it became clear to me that I was going to get married in the process of my, my change, I had faced very difficult things and difficult moments and decisions. Yesterday, I was listening to a podcast from somebody who mentors me in leadership, John C. Maxwell, about decision making. And it just, it just became a serious point of reflection for me because it's what makes a great person and what makes a helpless person issue of decision but I came to realize that deciding to leave the Catholic priesthood was the least in terms of the decision I had to make why? it was about me it was me writing letter of resignation facing the authority and the institution and saying I'm done me, no assistant Nobody's involved. Me. Every other person will cry. I didn't have any, any reason. I didn't have any biological child who depended on me. Whoever, everybody else had to priests, other people. People will easily move on or move on in life. So don't die because of people easily. Don't die as if if I am not there, everybody will die. If it is not what God wants or if it is not what brings you peace and fulfillment in God, don't think that the day you die, people will not move on. The world has never end, stopped one second because one person died. Not one day. Not anywhere. So for me, I had come to that place. 
But then when it came to the issue of marriage, beginning church, and other things, Lord. You now know it's no longer just you. So now, the things I never knew that will help me to mentor young people, to talk to young people. Issue of raising children. No, it's so easy to marry. So you just marry somebody. And then pregnancy comes. And the children are born. And then you know that babies don't take care of other babies. So it's not in the nature of children to take care of their kind. It is in the nature of adults. It means mature people. Not beautiful people. Not handsome people. I mean mature. Say mature. No, shape your mouth. Let the mature come out. Absolutely. I, no, it's, it's a deep thing. You need to consider it the deepest thing. Ah. So every day now, <laughs> Lord of mercy. Every day I wake up and thank God forever and ever. And I will go back. And, yeah, I am in a loop of thanksgiving. Endless returning to thanking God. Oh, thank God you gave me. You know? Oh, thank God you gave Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, reasons just abound every day. That as you are moving around shouting hallelujah, somebody is constantly thinking a step ahead about things that matter to you at the highest level of priority. Wow. I said, what of? What of if you shifted to the left or to the right and it was not that way? It means you can have a wonderful life and have a useless, miserable future. And can I tell you something? It is your future that will reveal you either as wise or fool. Or foolish. Oh, no, 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 no. Today you can appear to be something, not tomorrow. Eventually, what you, your level now, your, the, your actions now, your life now will play out in the future and people will refer to you, fool. So people so we hear sons and daughters say, if not for a fool, who was my father? And they may not so say so explicitly because of the fear of uh, honor your parents and they are now dead or they are now old. Uh, people just have to manage, manage some people because they were the mistake that brought them out as mistakes. So, there are too, too many things are involved in taking certain decisions. So I pray for you. That's why when I come here and I'm putting pressure on you for you to grow, putting pressure on you for you to rise, it's, it's, it's everything. It's everything. I, I say it's everything. Say everything. It's everything. It's everything. It's everything. There are serious issues. Children do not take care of children. It is adult. I will do that. I pray in the name of Jesus that you, you come to maturity. That maturity is what transformation brings about. I pray in the name of Jesus that by the power of the glory of the risen Lord that you will come to the place of maturity. In the name of Jesus. Maturity in form. Maturity in character. Maturity in stability. Maturity in dependability. Maturity in consistency in integrity. Maturity in prosperity. Maturity in everything that is beautiful. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. So we have talked about um, we have talked about transformation moving from one nature one form to another let's just few, in few words talk about the resurrection uh, the, the transformation that is inherent in the power of the resurrection let's talk about transformation in connection with the resurrection let's look at the glory factor because it's beholding beholding him with unveiled faces that we are transformed to the same copy of glory that he is and that he has Let's look at resurrection as the guarantee, as a change of form. First Corinth chapter 15 and verse 35. As I'm speaking, something is changing in a form. Something is breaking apart and a new nature is emerging. Come on, I say something is 
breaking apart chains things that hold you hold you in the place of darkness hold you hold you and make you not a blessing unto others a nature in you that makes you a trouble a nature in you that makes you unfit a nature that makes you not fitting for glory things are breaking in the name of jesus why am i speaking like this because there is the power that makes this possible shall power first corinth chapter 15 verse 35 to 49 but someone will say now paul is still talking about this is still a discourse the discourse on on resurrection He's still, he's still having a conversation, formal conversation, so to say, a treatise on the resurrection, making arguments from different points of view for the believers in Corinth to come to terms with the reality of the resurrection. Because some of them are denied the, the, the reality and the possibility of the resurrection. And Paul talked about the consequences of such thinking. But now let's go into what he is talking about in describing the resurrection, trying to make people understand, and from there we will take something away. Verse 35. But someone will say, 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 35. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? How are the dead brought into the anastasis? The rising and standing again of what was down. Death is depicted by lying being falling and being brought down leveled whereas resurrection is up again and erect and standing and being strong and being useful and being glorious and being productive and prosperous and holy and righteous up again have that at the back of your mind how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? They are talking about body now. Now you are talking, this is why we are talking, your body is your shape, your form. And perhaps you may think that's your nature, but that's not true. Verse 36, he does something that I, I, I would have done it if I were in his position. If you, have, if you have ever heard me say foolish, and people say, ah, that's not a Christian. <laughs> that's not a, <laughs> praise God, it's in the Bible. Foolish one. Praise God. Sometimes you don't just have any word to describe a thing except foolish or stupid. And people will just say, ah, a child of God. This is apostle of a foolish one. Means you are not wise. Doesn't mean you are not glorious, beautiful in God. It's just that you are foolish in this case. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. So the movements from one form to another means death. death to the original in order to be alive in the later the reason why some people oh after being born again and all of that nothing has changed their results in life their impacts in life their meaning everything in life remains the same there is no there is no distinction between their former and their later it's because there has not been death just guys talking to the room i mean paul writing to the romans in chapter six talked about being buried with him in his resurrection in his in his baptism in our baptism being buried with him don't you know all of us who are put on christ we have died and we're buried buried so something has to die the old has to die the old being dead is not in the likeness of the kind of death that we have that our grandfathers, our fathers, and some people we know have died. And they died once and for all. This death is about no longer being in control. No longer being in charge. So there is nobody as a child of God that will say, your old nature has died such that there is no possibility of coming back. It's not true. The day you lean back on it, you will discover it will come back. If you have been a crooked person, and the day you make a mistake of leaning, paying attention a little, opening the door, and giving room for crookedness, you will discover crookedness is alive. So you have to pay attention to this. That's why the scripture talks about watching. Lest you fall. 
let he who stands watch less. It's very important. Scripture talks about alertness, being alert, being watchful, being watchful. So this transformation is a death of something, of the old. It means no longer being in charge, no longer being the operating system, no longer being the influencing spirit, no longer being the deciding factor in your action, in your life. Okay. Verse 37. And what you sow, you do not sow. That body that shall be, but may grain. Perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases. This body that God gives as he pleases is a new form. It's a new shape. So when you sow yourself in Christ, when you give up your life in, in, in acceptance of salvation, it is akin to sowing you. Because when you sow something, you give up something. You let go something. So every time, you if you take a decision and surrender your life truly, it means you have sown your life. And then God takes the old nature and then gives you a body according to his plan. According to his purpose. He gives you a shape. He gives you a nature. He gives you a form. And to each seed, his own body. Each seed, his own body. Different. Verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. Glory to God. I say glory to God. All flesh is not the same flesh. There are some flesh that are powered by some spirits. There are some flesh that are glorious flesh. There are some flesh that are powerful flesh. There are, there are beautiful flesh. There are some flesh that are enabling flesh. There are some flesh that are prosperous flesh. Some flesh that are inspiring flesh. But there is one kind of flesh. Of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, another of birds, different flesh. This operates in a different context here. And we can take this out to, a, a, to talk about the flesh that we live in. The flesh that we live in, in accordance with the kind of results that this flesh produces. So you can see three, four, five, six, seven, ten people in a place with different results in engagement. It's a different kind of life. Different kind of forms. We are still talking about from here. Verse 40. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Celestial means heavenly. Terrestrial, terrestrial, the earth. Earthly bodies. We are still there. This still has application to us. When we enter into the realm of the resurrection, you are still walking around, you are still Atom, Atom, you are still Okun, you are still Ephion, you are still Okoro, still walking around, still light skin or stressed and darkened and short and emaciated or you have added weights and you still walk around. But something fresh, something different has happened to you. The heavenly experience of the resurrection has overwhelmed you and given you a different form, a different shape. A different nature, even in your okoroness, even in your atomness or okoness, you are still the okon, but there is a celestial thing that has taken place in you. This is what the resurrection brings about. Shout hallelujah! Verse 41 There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs, one star differs from another star in glory. Verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. This is what happens. There are two levels of resurrection. At this point, let me explain to you. There is the ultimate resurrection for the believers. That will be the general resurrection from the dead. Everyone that dies, the dead shall give up his dead the water the sea the oceans everywhere shall give up his dead even those who have gone through cremation those burned into ashes they shall give up their dead everyone who shall come alive some into glory and some into shame that is the final that is the ultimate resurrection that believers will rise but not rise like every other person and rise into pain and shame and darkness but believers will rise into the life of christ 
into the light and glory of Christ. But before then, there is the specific resurrection that who comes to Christ experiences. Experiences the resurrection of the end of shame in your form and the beginning of glory while you are still alive. That is the one that I'm talking about. That is what I say that the resurrection guarantees the change from shameful nature to glorious nature. The resurrection guarantees the change of a criminal to a virtuous person, a reliable person. The resurrection is God's power to change. The resurrection is God's power to change. It's the power of change from God. To change not just somebody's action, but to change the foundation that brings forth the manifestation of action. So also is the resurrection of the dead, verse 42. The body is sown in corruption. All of us are born in corruption. But it is raised in incorruption. That means in Christ Jesus, raised to another nature. Raised to another capacity. Raised to another character. That somebody, my, the mother can say, oh my daughter, oh my son, oh my this, oh this one. Some people in the family can actually say, Oh, not that girl. No, 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 no. Not that one. Please, we know her so much. It's one of us. Please don't marry her. I don't know if you know there are families like that. People like that. I've heard stories like that. Somebody trying to marry a very beautiful young woman in a family. I encountered this story some 20 years ago. At the beginning of my priestly call. And work. Beautiful girl. And as the person tries to make inquiry, oh, the auntie makes herself available. It's my niece. Don't marry. <laughs> don't marry. Don't marry her. Look, she's doing this. She's doing this. She's doing this. Look, in case you doubt me, watch on so so day and so so day. Go and stand in a particular place and watch at a particular time. What you see, tell me. <laughs> auntie <laughs> making herself available. And that first marriage, anyway, let's make the, let, let's allow the, the story to end on a beautiful note. The person walked away, said, no, everything changed. Another person came out to marry. And the auntie volunteered. I said, you know, this person is, this, 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 this. okay, so if you, in case you doubt me, this is, this is, a person said, oh, I'm told this and this and this about you. If that is true. That is actually why I want to marry you. <laughs> yeah. That thing that is used against you, I just feel like if it is true, then there must be something very beautiful about him. There must be something very, very distinguishing, really beautiful about you. So they are married now, they have kids grown up. <laughs> I've been married for years now, more than 15 years. The children are grown and they are having a wonderful time, wonderful time. Wonderful time. So I'm talking about the issue of people say, Oh, you see that person. Oh no, no, that's not the person. I wish you, I wish the sister had not died. Oh, I wish the brother had not traveled. It's a brother that not that one. But if the person had met Christ and had been transported in the power of the resurrection from death to life, that is when people lie and the testimonies of men will remain lying. I pray in the name of Jesus that that will be such a lie that will be lied about you. I pray in the name of Jesus that by the power of the resurrection that those who have known you before and drawn conclusion about you will come to the place of apologizing because they drew wrong conclusion about you in the name of Jesus Christ. So the resurrection turns men into lies. When God has come visiting, it changes one form to another. Doctors are free to lie when resurrection takes place. <laughs> Doctors, lawyers, judges are free to lie. Authorities are free to lie. A pastor is free to lie. Prophets are free to lie. Authorities, uh, lecturers, uh, people who have power over people to take decisions, they are free to lie. They are permitted to lie for God to be glorified because there is a power that turns what was useless into what is glorious i pray that will be spoken of you and concerning you in the name of jesus christ be seated it is sown verse 43 it is sown in dishonor 
the original nature is dishonor it is raised in glory hallelujah so it's okay originally dishonor it's okay to start with dishonor it's okay to start with decay that is what is available to everyone it's okay to have a past that is not beautiful it's okay to have a past that is not glorious that one cannot be proud of it's okay if that is your past just to let you know it's okay but the point is that the resurrection offers you another one resurrection offers you not a repair not a reform but the resurrection, resurrection offers you another form say another form another form in the likeness of the glory of the lord that is the benefit of accepting jesus christ as lord and savior the benefit of being in, in, being being planted and rooted in him the benefit because when we talk about people giving their life to christ it's just a, a matter of words and, and just speaking words and having doctrine in their head but it's not something that is found in rootedness being rooted find out what it means to be rooted so it's not about a student who is rooted in mathematics it's not about the teacher the teacher teaches you for one hour or two hours in school and you come back home and sit down for three four hours solving mathematics that's how people are rooted personal practice personal discipline so when we talk about issue of being born again issue of being in the lord Oh, just people just come in church and feel good and make those pronouncements. They go home. You see, there is no hunger to be rooted. There is no hunger for the pure milk of the world. There is no personal prayer. There is no study of the world. There is no way you can bear the fruit that is new. There is no way we can see a new form. If you have been stealing, it's a matter of time. You, if you have been stealing grains you will steal human head in a, it's, a, it's a matter of time just that it will not be any head that that we know it should be god and god not even the one we are not permitted you cannot even steal in the name of jesus but i'm telling you that you will graduate from evil to evil except you are rooted except you are rooted so transformation is rootedness it's not just that i left where i used to be you must be rooted in the new place rooted in god rooted in his word you don't pray because you are asked to pray you don't study because the pastor said it you are rooted because it is you it is you it is you it is your choice say i am rooted even though you are not rooted pretend just say it like pretend it's not a lie it's that you want to say i am rooted praise god praise god praise god praise god praise god praise god Praise God, I had thought we would be able to get this done. That means next week we're going to, going to do the, with this chapter 2 of this, of this revelation. Because we have to break this up now. It is sown in dishonor. Yes. But it is raised. What is resurrection? Up again. It is up in honor. Up standing in honor. Yes, you gave yourself. You walked in dishonor, walked in disgrace. Everybody was ashamed of you. Everyone, nobody took you seriously. Nobody saw you as anything valuable. Nobody could vouch for you. Nobody will want to associate with you. Nobody, not even yourself, will recommend yourself to somebody. And then the Christ encountered you and you allowed the encounter and accept the rootedness and the being planted in him something happens honor breaks out from the same life that is a new form that's what the resurrection does resurrection is not a doctrine it is a reality that is talked about in doctrine so it's not something we just know in our head it is something that we are in our life the new form so if you are sitting down here and you used to be hopeless and now you are the hope of your family the hope of your those you connect the hope of your environment something happened to you there has been a change of form and it is because of the resurrection the resurrection because when christ rose if you listen to the gospel and read the gospel he rose when he came to see the disciples he didn't have to knock at the door he didn't have to say bum, 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 bum. Moreba, apostle before Moreba, are you people there he came and appeared he said peace 
unto you. No hindrance. Too many things hindering you is because your own nature is the operating system. Too many obstacles in your life is because the corruption is your expression. Too many things holding you back and you blame people. You blame people in your workplace. Blame people. Blame a lecturer that say you will not graduate. Blame a lecturer that made you repeat one year. Lo, it is an is a corrupt form that can be stopped and hindered. Ah, it was miracle when Jesus walked upon the water before his resurrection or when he walked upon when he rose nothing it will no longer be a miracle a miracle means it's not normal but it is normal for the risen glorious body to float to ascend to appear to many people at the same time in different places as i'm talking to you you can have a trance of jesus here and a billion people across the world can have experiences with jesus everywhere before now it was not so before he died he was just in the flesh and he was in one place with one, not because he could not be everywhere but he had to obey the law in order to break out bring us out of the law of limitation so when he walked upon the sea it was not a normal occurrence it was just once but after he rose it's no longer an abnormal thing or an expected thing it is now the normal thing that water cannot cause him to sink. That walls cannot hinder him. That enemies cannot slow him down. No trouble can trouble him. No pain can pain him. Nothing. Nothing. That is what happens when you come into the place of transformation. In the rootedness in Christ Jesus. By the power of the resurrection. Certain walls uh, that you stand forever to beg people to help you cross, uh, you just walk right through it. Ah, you walk right through it. Why your nature has changed? The things that could assist uh, trouble no longer assist trouble. Can I tell you something? Corruption in you is the personal is the personal assistance of your trouble. The corrupt nature is the personal assistance of your lateness in life. The corrupt nature is the personal assistance of your demotion and failure. The corruption in you is the personal assistance of your nature assists you to fail. Your nature assists you to live in shame. Your nature assists you to have disgrace as your portion. But when there is a change of form, can I tell you something? Hindrances let you go. Obstacles respect you. Things that could hold you back, they further your work. That is what transformation brings about. Shout transformation rise to your feet we have no time again to accommodate next week we're going to talk about resurrection as guaranteeing transformation chapter 2 but before then say nowhere it is this glory that I want nowhere it is this new form say I can no longer stay in the old form I can no longer live in the old form raise your two hands call the name Jesus just call him if you are a child of God say now I know now I know my portion it is not what I fast it's not what I I pray and fast for it is what you have already done for me I live on it I live by it I live through it I am rooted in it I build upon it I invest in it I live in it for somebody who is yet to come to Christ mention that name Jesus confess your sins submit to him say my nature is corrupt my original is useless my original is death say Lord Jesus you are the transformation of soul Lord Jesus you are the transformation of destiny Lord Jesus you are the change of nature your resurrection is the change of substance your resurrection is the change of being is the change of character is the change of work is a change of attitude is a change of expression say so Lord Jesus I surrender Lord I surrender Lord I surrender I surrender the old nature the corruption nature the corruptible I surrender the defileable 
I surrender. The dirty, I surrender. The hopeless, I surrender. The darkness, I surrender. The defilements, I surrender. The lies, I surrender. The helplessness, I surrender. The backwardness, I surrender. The death and the shame, I surrender. And I take on in you, I accept you as my new nature, as my new ancestry, as my new origin, as my new destiny, as my new purpose, my past, my present, my future, my glory, my salvation. Say, so I accept you as my new nature. I walk through walls. I walk upon the water. Waves cannot keep me. Winds cannot slow me down. Storms cannot break me. Walls cannot hold me back. No limit limits me. Only what can limit you will limit me. Only what will break you will break me. I wear your nature, your risen nature. I wear your nature, your glorious nature. I wear your nature, your beautiful nature. I wear your nature, your heavenly nature. I wear your nature, your life-giving nature. I wear your nature, your prosperous nature. I wear your nature, your powerful nature. I wear your nature, your healthy nature. No sickness hold me back. No sickness holds me back. No corruption holds me back. No addiction, no addiction holds me back. Say by the glorious transformation of the power of the resurrection addictions in my life you are broken mention those addictions they expire now mention those addictions they are broken now no cave can hold me by the transformation in christ i call you forth come out of the cave come out of the cage come out of the sea come out of the monster come back to life come back to health come back to strength come back to stability come back to purity come back to ability come back to glory come back to wealth come back to holiness come back to righteousness come back to honor do not stop speaking say i rise again anastasis i am up again i am up in new form i am up in new nature i am up in new being i am up in new expression Do not stop talking. I am up again. I'm up in God. I am up in health. I am up in strength. I am up in power. I am up in wonder. I am up. I command the spirit of weakness, spiritual weakness, expire in the life of believers expire in the divisions spiritual covering spiritual weakness spiritual laziness among the divisions of god among the 24 elders among the eight among the leaders among ministers among members of GSC, every covering of darkness i command the lifter whatever that covers the church the body of christ the covering of prayerlessness the covering of ignorance the covering which is a spell of death i command you be lifted be lifted for it is written that it will uncover it will take away the veil that covers nations on this mountain death shall be swallowed up yes this is already the mountain death has been swallowed up yes this is already the mountain death has been destroyed this is already the mountain yokes are broken this is already the mountain chains are falling apart this is already the mountain glory rises in the house anastasis i command wombs come up come up in fruitfulness i command businesses businesses come up in fruitfulness i command destinies come up in glory anastasis rise again anastasis shine again anastasis prosper again anastasis bloom again 
Anastasis, rise again. Anastasis, you can pray again. You can see again. You can hear again. You can touch again. 